Hi everyone, Angela Westland here, Independent Stamping Up Demonstrator for Australia. Now, on my members group, I promised I would do a free tutorial when we reached 100 members. We're now at 122, which is really great. So if you have any friends, just make sure you share the link with them and they're more than welcome to join. Now, what I thought I'd do is I've had a lot of people wanting to know how to use the Stamping Up Distinctive Stamp Sets. I use the Healing Hugs one quite a lot and there are a bit of do's and don'ts and how you can get a really good impression. So back in, in, in July, which was still in July, but in the off the page um, class we made this little wallet and a matching pocket card but I created my own DSP using the healing hug so that's what we're going to do today and then I'm going to make that into a card a very easy card okay so I've got my and I will be using my stamp paratus you can just use your um, you can just use your acrylic blocks if you want to but I will be using the stamp paratus so I'm starting off with a piece of very vanilla and I always start off with a piece that is a lot bigger than I need so I'm going to start just popping and we're going to be doing some masking so I'm using the Eclipse masking tape which I use a lot I just cut it off stamp my as in this flower like here's I stamped the flower on the Eclipse masking tape and then I very roughly and I'll just show you how roughly I just cut round it not leaving any border or anything because this is a mask so just very quickly I've already done the leaves so when I do make my own design series paper when I'm using the Healing Hug stamp set I usually will have three or four of these flowers stamped ready to use as my masks okay so that's as easy it is to make a mask okay so I'm going to be stamping in flirty flamingo for the flower now the big thing with using the distinctive stamp sets uh, the artist has already put all the impressions there for you so we're it is to be used in a different way now just because I'm using flirty flamingo if you've got flirty flamingo your flirty flamingo ink pad it's a mouthful might not work for you because you may have too much ink in it the best ink pads to use are ones that are going a little bit dry and they don't have a lot of ink in them and I, I know this one I need to re-ink it so I thought I'd use this one to show you you can see most probably in the center or there it needs re-inking but I don't the one way to find out which ink pads is just to get a scrap piece of paper and stamp them up when you're stamping the flower you're not going to go stamp 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 if you've got it on an acrylic block you're not going to go stamp 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 you have to do one impression like that just pressing down and I can see when I you can do it again but you're not stamp stamp stamping you're just pressing down so I have a stamp case underneath my stamparatus and then I'm just going to bring that across And because I've used the very vanilla, it brings out the highlights for us already. Okay. Now, I would just wipe off my 
with my chamois. Now I'm going to grab one of my masks and when you're using your mask, because you're going to be stamping on the mask, okay, it's important to leave a little bit of the one that you've already stamped showing. You don't want to cover your whole flower, otherwise you're going to end up with some very vanilla showing there. So I'm just doing putting the mask there and I'm just going to go the other way with this and you don't have to do leaves if you don't want to you can just do the flower you can use several different images to make your own design a series paper and then when I take it off this flower here gives the illusion that it is underneath that one okay so what we might do now is I'll just stamp so I'll just keep going as I said I normally would use I'm just trying to cover up all the very vanilla. So each time I'm just wiping my stamp with my chamois so that it doesn't um, transfer any unwanted ink and you'll see that I'm going to be using several so this time I'm going to put the leaf there and I've masked off both these flowers and I'm just going to grab some pear pizzazz and it's the same leaf from that stamp set so it's still a distinctive stamp set so we just need to just add pressure to it and up so it's just a matter of getting the correct um, ink pads that aren't going to be too juicy so I'm just going to have that on there wipe that off so I can just position that so don't have all your leaves going the same way just turn them same with your flowers have them going different ways I just think it's a really fun technique and I do use it quite a lot with different with different stamps. Now I need to have a leaf mask on there. Just so a little bit of the green is showing. And I'm going to face this one down this time grab my flirty flamingo so it's a little bit blotchy there so I'm just going to stamp that up again So the good thing about doing a larger piece of paper is that you can just cut the best part of it, whatever that you like. So 
So then I'm just going to be putting, I think, some just mask those leaves up. So once again, I just want a little bit of that showing. So I can't recommend the Eclipse Masking Tape highly enough. So that's, that's masked. I need to put it on this one. Okay. So then I'm just going to have that coming up there. See how I didn't have enough of that showing and you end up with a space there. So I'm just going to just move my mask and I'm just going to stamp on that little bit there. And that's fixed it right up. And that's why I do like using the Stamparatus for this technique. That one there needs to be masked, that one in the corner, and this one here also needs to be masked. But this has to be one of my favourite stamp sets. Just making sure I've masked everywhere I'm supposed to. So this ink pad is getting quite dry so I'm just going to add, do a second stamping and it doesn't matter like if you, it doesn't have to be perfect. So you can see how the leaves look like they're coming out from underneath. So then we're going to just mask there and mask there and just put your masks in the way that your flowers underneath are facing because then you know if you're doing another flower you know that which way you want your flower to go back down the next time. So I'm just going to put a leaf image there so my pear pizzazz isn't as dry as this one is as the flower is the flirty flamingo so I've got to know which stamp pads, which stamp colours aren't really juicy. Now when you put your when you stamp your flower, another thing is if it's got bubbles on it, like when when I do this impression here. If I was stamping like that and it had all bubbles on it, it's far too juicy to be using with this type of stamp set. So 
So I have done some lighter flowers and some darker flowers just to change it up and I'm going to mask that one. And I might even mask that one while I'm at it. And just keep that mask there for a minute so I'm going to just might just pop a leaf going that way it's most probably only going to show one leaf but that's perfectly fine Mask that one off. So just So as I said, I normally do a much larger piece. And I'll wipe that off. So just a couple more to go. need to move that mask so it's covering that flower there and that leaf needs just to come up a little bit because it wasn't showing I need to see a little bit of green so this stamp should just about do this corner and I nearly stamped the flower in green then that would have been lovely so I'm just going to do this corner there is done up there is done so we just need to mask this one off and I think I'm just going to finish off by mark by just stamping a couple of flowers now this mask up here I can use over here and this leaf there so I'm going to just stamp the flower there actually I might bring it over a bit and just finish off with one last leaf and then we'll be ready to cut into it This mask off, this one's finished, 
this one up here is finished. Sometimes I forget where the masks are and I forget to take them off. So I just want to cover that little flower there. And I think I'll just put one more leaf in there. So just grab my pair of pizzazz. So I might just put that bit there. And just cover mainly all that flour and I'm just going to stamp a little bit of that flour there you might be fine just using the acrylic blocks but I do like using the Stamparatus so I can go back over it. Okay, so that's all the masking done. Just slide these extra strong magnets off. And that will just wipe off quite it straight away. So I recommend that you do just get your chamois and wipe that your um, Stamparatus straight away and I like to wipe my stamps over straight away I always clean them a little bit better once I'm off camera so that can go away over there out the way so now this was the technique that I wanted to show you so I just love it I just think it's it's just so effective and just remember those points with the um, using the distinctive stamp sets. Now I've got some pretty peacock. Now I will give you the measurements because there's no word document with this. It's just for those that haven't done my classes, you get a video which would be more detailed than what I'm doing today. And then you get a word document with all the measurements products used and step-by-step -step instructions as well all for ten dollars if you're in Australia if you're overseas it's eleven only because I have to do it through PayPal and they take almost a dollar off me each time so that's why okay so this is eleven inches long by four and one quarter inches wide and I've scored it at five and a half okay so then inside, I've already, to save some time, I did the masking of the of two flowers just in the corner there. And this is just a piece of Whisper White and that's five and a quarter by four inches. And this is the first time you will see me using this, um, I'm hoping it's going to work. I've put a whole bottle of Tombow, Tombow in here because I use an awful lot of ink, a lot of glue, I should say. And I saw an overseas demo, Sam McDonald, I'm sure you know her, um, using this. And I just happened to see them and they were only a couple of dollars, so I thought I'd give it a go. I was hoping that it's going to give me more control and maybe I'm not going to be going through my glue like I do. So just and if you're wondering what this is, it is an adhesive eraser. Stamping up don't sell them, but if you want a private message to me, I can tell you where you can get them. They're only about six dollars. 
but Stamping Up used to sell them and they're just unreal because if you get a bit of glue like that on your cardstock you can just get it off very quickly. So that's just the inside of our card. So I'll set that aside and then I have a piece of Pretty Peacock once again which I've already embossed with the Scripty embossing folder. You can see that. I really like it. And what we're going to do then is I'm going to grab my card trimmer and I'm going to cut this this way. I'm going to cut it at five and a half inches. Now you don't have to do this precise measurement and that is at five and a half so I'm not going to cut any off. So I'm just going to slice this down at two and a half. I'm just getting used to this new trimmer. It's unreal. It's a great size for craft, for um, card making. And it doesn't take blades, which is pretty awesome too. So then I'm left with that. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to actually, depending which way, I was going to do it on an angle, like have it going across your card like that. If you ever do that, it's just best to glue it first like that so it overhangs both sides, that's a tip for you, and then just snip off the back pieces like that. But I think it will look a lot nicer if I have it going down there. I've already done the sentiment. Yes, I think I will do it like that. Nothing like changing my mind. So, let's get the glue down to the nozzle. And I do like this because it is giving me a lot more control on my glue. So then I'm just going to glue this piece. So this is a very simple card. So I'm just lining that up with my grid lines. Just so I get it straight. And so I've done it so it's over the edge. So I'm just going to bring in. So I just want. I'm still getting the knack of this new trimmer. is very sharp. So I'm just... I tell you, it's unreal. It is just so sharp. And you can take the smallest of small so it neatens up your card so then I'm just going to pop that onto there 
And I hope you'll try this technique, whether you use a distinctive stamp set or whether you use any other sorts of stamp set. Please share it on the group. I'm sure everyone would love to see what other people create besides me. So I do encourage you to pop your creations on there. Now I only put a bit of extra glue on that that time because it is an embossed piece of cardstock so it needs to be a bit more glue on it so the embossed part will so isn't that lovely I just really love those colors together too so that's the pretty peacock and then I stamped in flirty flamingo and pear pizzazz on very vanilla so and then inside you've got your lovely I just think that's such a lovely card and then I'm just just don't want to um, I think it's going to look better down there so I might just grab some dimensionals and just pop that sentiment up and what an easy card that is just by using creating your own DSP one more so if you're ever interested in doing any of the classes that are listed there is a file under files you've only got to private message me so this sentiment was from Magnolia. Good morning Magnolia. Not only for what you do but for being someone special and this is from the Healing Hugs and then I use the Scripty embossing folder. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I hope it will help you to make a card of your own. Thank you for watching.